The Sudbury market is changing a ton and has changed. We're in a three, four month transitionary period. And this is super important if you're buying or selling in 2024. You need to watch this video and understand this so you can make the perfect and right decision for you and your family. So I'm Tristan Ritchie from Lake City Realty, and I buy and sell and help people invest in Sudbury, Ontario. I'm one of the top realtors, and I love what I do, and I love helping people. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. And I also really appreciate if you like and subscribe. It helps me a ton. I'm trying to grow the channel and help as many people as I can. So that would truly, truly help. I appreciate it. So let's get right into it. So we'll start with where we are in the market right now, what's happening in Sudbury. And then I'm going to head to where are the tips for buyers and sellers? So what you need to know and how this next six months is going to be a huge opportunity for buyers. But don't worry, sellers, there's some light at the end of the town. So let's get right into it. So we're in a market transitionary zone right now. We've been in a downslope for about six months since June. We've dropped just over 20% and we're heading into a zone for three or four months where it's going to be flat over Christmas, New Year's. It's always a little bit slow. But when we come out of that is where you really need to be educated and understand what's going to happen. So we've already seen the five-year fixed drop a little bit. So you can get it in the low fives now when it was about 6% before in just a couple of weeks. So that affects affordability. So these market transitions are usually last between three to six months. This one's going to be about four until the spring. And it might even be earlier if they decide to chop the rates a little bit earlier. So one of the main points that's been happening is buyer awareness. This has actually have been happening since earlier this year. They know there was something up at the market. The rates was affecting their affordability. They couldn't pay as much. There was a lot of uncertainty. So they were a little bit more skittish. There's still people buying, but they're not as comfortable buying at the high prices. A lot of them will only buy if there's a steal. So they're out there negotiating, putting in low balls, wanting something, but only if it's a super, super good deal. And that was really tough for a while. That's why the prices didn't drop too, too fast. It's because my next point, seller expectations were out of whack. So buyers realize it always before sellers, right? So the sellers were all still thinking, hey, I still want my COVID prices, which was not even close to possible. So there's a lot of listings on the market sitting. They weren't that motivated. They're like, let's try and get our high price. So we are seeing a lot less of that, which leads me to my next point. Sellers are being a lot more realistic and they're pricing their houses correctly. And a lot more of them are willing to negotiate now. So the seller expectations and the recent seller mindsets have caused them to be open to discussions and negotiations with buyers that are out there and willing to pay right now. So we're seeing a lot more deals. That's basically what that means. Buyers, there's deals out there and that's going to last four to six months. Wait till the end and I'll tell you guys that there is a great opportunity for you here. Number five, or the next point, the pricing strategies have changed. There's way less underpricing, way less price at way too high. There, a lot of them are priced at what they're worth. So if you act quick, doesn't need to be over asking, you bring them a decent offer, they'll consider you right away because there's still competition, just a lot less. And it's different price ranges as well. Another big story of this last year and heading into next year, it's going to be the same, is the very low sales volume. In the real estate world, it's a huge talking point amongst realtors because it is feast or famine. There's a few of us that are doing, still doing lots of deals and seeing success. And when there's hard times, people gravitate towards the experienced realtors, right? So the ones of us that are experienced, we we still have a lot of clients who are buying and selling lots and doing a lot of deals. But the newer agents, if you just have a cousin that does one or two deals a year, they're not doing anything barely. So in the peak, it was 14 deals per agent. Right now, this year, people are been doing six. That's about $30,000 commission, which is not enough to live on, especially when you have to pay your fees, board fees, insurance, driving around, marketing, there's not much left for the average agent. But next is the Bank of Canada announcements and the interest rates. We all know they raised them like crazy last year. That's what causes the prices to go down. But they were going to hold them for a bit. Now with the recession on the horizon, everyone's talking about it. It's clearly basically here, two months of negative GDP. What do they do when we're in a recession? to help stimulate the economy. They're going to drop the rates. I've heard some economists say up to two basis points, which is 
down from six to four percent. That would be huge. So the other thing to keep in mind, it doesn't mean that the price are going to go crazy because if the government's doing that, it means there's other turmoil or in Canada that's causing them to want to do this. So maybe higher unemployment rate, less jobs, less opportunities, less money to be made. So there will be less people with money, but the people that can still afford and want to buy, those people will be like, oh, nice, I can get a house with a cheaper mortgage, which will cause them to go up, but not as significant as you may think. So wait till the end. I'll tell you how to maximize this market. Next is the rental market. Historically, rent prices never go down. Unless the population drops significantly or any, rent prices do not go down. And Sudbury is on an upward trend of population. I know our rents are high, but they aren't going down. So lock in your rental, stay in it if you can. If you're not buying a house, save up, get a roommate temporarily because they are going to go up. But I think we're in a flat for about a long time, for a while, because we have reached pretty much the peak for prices. Like they can't go much higher, right? But we're going to be a flat. They will not go down. But what this means is Higher rents means, and lower rates means those investors are going to start creeping back into the subway market. And that is what caused the market to go up in the first place. Everyone thinks that the Toronto buyers were buying the super expensive million dollar houses in the South End in Sudbury, which obviously there was a few like everywhere else, but that is not what caused the market to go up. It was the lower price point, single family houses and duplexes and triplexes that were under 500,000. They were getting scooped up like crazy. And it was first time home buyers competing with investors and tons of investors from Toronto that could afford something in Sudbury. And that caused a huge bidding war in the lower price points. And those lower price points, local, usually local people, they had a hundred thousand worth of equity that they built up. So they're buying the 550, 600,000, right? And then that 550, 600, they made 150. They're buying the 800. 900,000. So it worked its way out. So what I'm seeing in 2024, there's going to be a huge increase because basically the investors, since the rates went above 5%, were nowhere. There's been none, right? They're, they've been dormant. They bought one or two properties. They're not extremely experienced. They're just waiting it out. They're just as scared as some of the buyers. But what we're going to see in 2024 is that's going to pick up. I've already seen it start, especially with the dropping of the five-year fix. Those are going to start competing with the first-time home buyers again, which will drive up the price a little bit again. Let's just say a little bit. Okay, so what do you do as a buyer or seller? Right now, tips for buyers. The best opportunity is if you're looking for a step-up home. Why? Because your step-up home that you are buying, you can buy at a discount. The hot market that's still happening right now is under 450. There's still a ton of people. Some of them going multiple offers. I seen one just last week with 16 offers. And the house that you're buying, your step-up home, the 550 to 700,000, those are slow. They're sitting, they're waiting a little bit. There's not that many buyers there. So if you can still get a premium for for your house and you buy your step up home at a discount, it's an amazing opportunity. Because when the rates drop a little bit or next year in spring, when the prices start to go up, it gets a little hotter. These ones are going to sell as well, the higher price points. So buyers that are looking to step up, this is your golden ticket. Buyers in general, you have about six months till, like I just said, the investors start coming back in or more buyers start to come in because the rates are going to drop a little bit. So this is your opportunity right now, especially the next two months, super good deals. I know people say don't buy during Christmas and January. Do it. If there's a deal, usually those are people that have to sell. Okay, now let's flip it for the sellers. Knowing this, what is your decision? You need to look at the opportunity cost. You're selling and what are you doing with that money? Or what are you doing next? Are you selling to buy a larger property at a bigger discount. So maybe that's worth it because you'll get a bigger discount on a larger property. Are you looking to sell just because? Oh, like I want to get my money out and I'm just going to hold on to it, put it in the bank. It's not a good time for you. Keep it. Wait till it goes up a little bit. But how much is it going to go up? If you sell, you have $200,000 worth of equity and you put that at 6% in a mutual fund. Is that 6% more than what the market's going to increase yearly? Maybe. So maybe it is a good time to sell right now because the stock market's also at a low. So be mindful. I'm not a financial advisor here, but these are all the things that I talk to myself about and these are the things that I base my decisions on. So if you have any questions about buying, selling in this market 2024, feel free to reach out to me at any time. I would love to help. And um, if you have any opposing views, just drop them in the comments. I would love to hear it. I'm always open to learning and growing. Thanks for listening.